All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about percent composition, which is going to determine the part of the whole compound that elements happen to make up in a formula or in a sample. Um, biggest thing that we need to first understand is that for a percentage, we're always talking about the part compared to the whole. How much is this part of the whole item? So for percent composition, we're talking about elements normally. We can talk about different parts of a formula, but normally it's the amount of an element in the whole formula. Um, it's percent by mass, so we can do this experimentally or also theoretically, uh, but both cases are going to be using mass. So for an experimental percent composition, they're going to be experimentally uh, determined numbers, numbers that you measure in the lab, or if it's theoretical, it's going to be using the molar masses of a formula and the elements inside that formula. So your steps for a theoretical percent composition. Um, you need to know the mass of the whole thing, so we need to calculate the theoretical molar mass, just, just using the, the formula like we've done before uh, with moles. Um, then you need to determine the mass of each element, which shouldn't be hard because you just looked all of those up. Um, the subscripts are going to multiply by the molar mass in grams of each element, and then you're going to take the mass of each atom or each, each element and divide it by the total mass of the formula, multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So that looks something like this. <clears throat> For this compound, barium nitrate, I need to know the mass of each part. So barium weighs 137.33 grams per mole. Nitrogen weighs 14.01 grams per mole. And oxygen weighs 16.00 grams per mole. Now, because there's a subscript 2 on the outside of the parentheses, there's two copies of the 1401, and there are six copies of the oxygen. Now, just as a reminder, these numbers are coming off my periodic table, um, and you can look those up in order to figure those out. So I need to add these all together to get the mass of the whole thing. And that means that this whole thing weighs 261. <clears throat> 0.35 grams per mole. So that's the whole. Now, if I want to know percent composition of each element, I need to take each part and divide it by the whole thing. So I would take the 137.33 divided by the 261.35 times 100. And that equals 52.5%. I just have us round these to the nearest tenth just for sake of ease. This is barium. Then we have um, 1401 times 2. So that whole thing, that's how much nitrogen is in that whole compound. There's two copies of it, so you have to multiply by 2, divided by the 261.35, again, times 100 to make it to a percentage, and that equals 10.7%. Again, rounding to the nearest tenth, just for sake of ease. Finally, the oxygen, 16 times 6. Don't need the double O. 261.35 times 100 to make it into a percentage. And we end up with 36.7. Percent. Oxygen. <clears throat> if you did this right, these percentages should add up to 100% or very close to it. <clears throat> if you do it for this problem, they're going to end up just a little bit shy, um, but that's okay as long as it's within a reasonable amount. 0 0.1, 0 0.2 would be acceptable. So that was theoretical percent because we don't actually have a sample of chemical, and so that's the amount in theory that we would expect. We can also do this experimentally. And when we do this experimentally, we use the mass that's derived from an experiment. Um, we're going to have the mass of the whole sample. We're going to also have the mass of a part. Now, to do this, you need to know the mass of the part. And so sometimes that's determined by subtracting how much you start with compared to how much you finish. And the difference in those two numbers is going to be the part that's either removed or that's added. So your step is to determine the mass of each element that we need. Um, that's either going to be provided to you 
on a sheet of paper if it's a worksheet or it's going to be measured actually in the lab. Then you're going to take the mass of that element, so mass of part divided by the mass of the sample, the whole thing, and again times 100 to turn it into a percentage. A problem looks like this. Uh, so what if I wanted to know the mass of nitrogen in a sample? So I have a 12.557 gram sample and I know that 2.068 grams of it happen to be nitrogen. <clears throat> So part divided by whole, just like we were doing for the theoretical percentage. Now notice these are both grams, so they cross out. Times 100 to make it into a percentage. If you do this, it ends up rounding to 16.5%. Nitrogen. Now, what we also know is that the remaining of the sample is 100 minus 16.5. So let's just say this was dinitrogen monoxide. We know that the remainder, the what is it? It's 83.5% uh, must be oxygen, if that were to be the formula. So after watching these videos or this video, you should understand what a percentage is, part divided by whole, and then how that applies to percent composition because we're talking about typically uh, how much of the element is in the whole sample. Uh, you know now how to do a theoretical percent composition and also a experimental percent composition. I hope that helps.